Hey guys, welcome to the review show. Um, w- um, welcome back to our Snare Cut series um, where we're going to be going through the three um, um, DCU, uh, main DC- DCU films. So last week was Man of Steel. This week is BVS. And so um, you guys really enjoyed actually um, the Man of Steel review. And that one was freaking long and which I'm sorry about. Um, we'll try to keep this one at least shorter. Um, at least around the 30 minute mark I, at least i hope when it comes to editing um but um overall i mean we mostly agreed on everything in man of steel we agreed on like you know the action how dark it was and most of that and so um we're gonna switch it up here we're not gonna actually agree on that much for this one um so i mean we're, uh i guess the one of i guess we can start from the beginning um I hate that um, that they introduce, you know, the death, like the uh, Bruce's parents' death again in this film. I really, it's like you couldn't open it on Metro, um, Metropolis, you know, and like you know, just threw Bruce in there instead of just diving in instead of like open instead of because I feel like we've seen the death of you know Bruce's parents too many times, and the scene where we see you know the dream sequence where we see Bruce go and delivering flowers to those um, you know grave at least kind of you know you know gives something a little bit more different and it's like okay his parents is dead we know that and you know he's mourning them you know having PTSD with them and so he's like and next you know we see Martha watch. We'll get to that later and so but the but that's the mostly the reason why i see um the point of uh, the first scene pointless because it's like martha it's like oh it's gonna come back later you know whatever five minutes pointless and so and next even and like and just or just opening on you know the you know the funeral part and that's like the been like two minutes i guess and that would have been fine um but it drags and it's like we get it just get to the just move on. And so, I don't know. I don't really like the opening at all. I feel like the opening is pointless. It's like, we already know this. Like, come on. Um, so, so yeah. Okay. So, I obviously very much disagree with you on this. Of um, course. <laughs> I think, um, so not only do I, like, love the opening, um, I do think it's, like, the best Death of the Waynes we've had in live action. Um and I also would say that, um, you know, that also did give us, um, you know, Beautiful Eye, which is one of my, it might be my favorite track from BVS um, see, in terms see, of the score. That's, that's like saying, but, yeah, but that makes but, no, <laughs> let, let, you, let can, you, you can, you let, can, let get, no, 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 this is a debate. I can speak whenever I want it. That's like giving it, that's like showing a good shot in a film. And like, you know, like, get, like, you know, it's like, there's like a um, part in the film. It's like a beautiful shot, but it's like, what's the point of that shot? That's like a really long ass shot. It's like, what was the point of that shot? Because it's like felt it was like out of nowhere. It was like, okay, cool. You showed us that you showed us a pimp uh, eye, you know, the eye pupil. It's like, oh, well, she's dead. Of course. It's like, what? I'm, I'm getting to my point. I'm getting to my point. So I think the opening sequence of the death of the Waynes is an incredibly important scene to the story as well. So you always so people will say that like oh we've seen this before in other media like in you know other the previous films or whatever but whenever you are approaching a new like version of a character so with regards to spider-man or regards to superman or batman or whatever you you need to act like the previous all the other movies essentially don't exist you can't pretend to just rely on other people's knowledge for but, that but 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 in homecoming they didn't show any of that but we knew that they were dead because we get because uh, which because in homecoming they didn't show um ben um ben being shot or like you know and so and but we not, get that not not what? to i don't want to i'm not going to get into a homecoming debate because we you already said you want to keep this like you know review a little shorter i i know but but, but you brought it you, up you you are sim- it. you're you are simply saying that we know who that it's uncle ben who died because of previous knowledge you have from other films when you were creating a new universe you can't rely on that if i took a 10 year old who knew nothing about spider-man to see homecoming they'd have no idea who uncle ben was but that's a conversation for a different story i'm not trying to get into that debate right now but you also that opening sequence with regards to bruce wayne's monologue when he's talking about you know 
there was a time above, a time before. There are perfect things, diamond absolutes, but things fall, things on earth, and what falls is fallen. And, you know, that whole dialogue or monologue that Bruce is having is showing the type of Batman that he used to be. He used to be a Batman with morals and ideals, but he's fallen from grace. He's fallen from that point of that ideal Batman who didn't kill, who, you know, was basically like that Batman from Batman the Animated Series. But then it is essentially establishing that he fell from grace, that he isn't that Batman that he is anymore. And that's uh, all of that is established in that opening scene. Yeah, that's what you just basically said, um, you know, the, you know, the anime show. It's like you're basically saying, oh, we need to watch the anime show to know that. It's no, like- I'm not saying that. I'm saying he basically used to be because people view Batman the animated series as like the best iteration of Batman outside of comics, which I agree with. And that's essentially the type of Batman he was before, because one of the complaints that people have about BVS is that Batman kills. And this is his, and throughout the movie. We are shown, and I don't know if this is the complaint that you have or anything, but it is, it is a complaint that people have in general, where they complain that Batman kills and everything. And this is it's and I don't BVS, yeah, I'm not that. saying, but I'm just like this is one of the things where the movie establishes that this is a Bruce Wayne who has given in to deeper levels of nihilism and just apathy, and isn't the same Batman that he used to be, and that's all part of his character arc in the movie. But he doesn't really have a character arc until like the last like minute of the film like like his character throughout this whole entire film he wants to kill superman and which is and which is like a narc complaints like superman doesn't have a good reasoning which i and even the ultimate edition that you only get like you know two minutes of more of screen time of you know reasoning of him of superman to hate batman even more and which it doesn't really you know add that much it's like they're they they're forced to fight at the end of the day. And so, and it's just like, and when their fight comes, it's just like, yeah, but we'll get that to that later on. Um, but yeah. yeah. And uh, so I will say something for all of our, our listeners. So Austin and I will be t- are talking about the ultimate edition with this, which is the original movie that Zack Snyder made before the uh, studio forced, uh, they were, they basically cut off half an hour of the movie. And that's why we got the budget, the actual cut. So yes, we're basically re- reviewing the ultimate edition, but yes, Austin continue. Um, so, and next, like, you know, continue on with like, you know, like the opening scene, Bruce falls down a hole and next bats and next bats make him fly. It's like, that's well, not, because that's... He, he, he says that in the dream, they took me to the light, the beautiful light. He's, it's a dream sequence. They didn't make that clear. You're just well, you're just making the movie Bruce, better. Bruce no, no, literally no, 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 says, no, no, he literally making, says, no, in now the you're dream, just making, they took me to a light, a no, beautiful no. lie as he's levitating up. No, you're just making the movie better. <laughs> um, and that's another thing. I like. There's so many dream sequences in this movie, and you know what makes movies bad? Dream sequences. Why do dream sequences make movies bad? They make them bad. It's like a false scare. You know, you know, (laughs) for example, Jaws Revenge, nothing but dream sequences. And it's like, okay, and there's other problems with that film. I'll admit that. But, you know, what really hurt that film the most is like when anything actually happens is is a dream. And that's what and that's like, you know, in there and Zack Snyder is too focused on like, you know, you know, telling the next story before even finishing this story. It's like like finish this one then work on the next one like literally like like literally like most of this film is him trying to set up the next one like because he's in here trying to set up wonder woman which really isn't really in the film and does nothing until the end and so and like there's so many char- different characters that they try to set up the flash you know cyborg aquaman and it, it's just like why are we having exposition for these characters like you clearly have you know plenty more explanation uh, for them in the next movie save that for the next movie work on this one quit you know worrying about the next one and give us a good ass fight that which is a good ass fight i just don't like the reasoning for the fight and we'll talk about a little bit more of that um, so i will say regarding setting up things so like i mentioned in the man of steel um uh, review Zack Snyder had this five movie arc plan it was basically like a superman and justice league arc and so essentially it actually, you know, in terms of set, he doesn't actually, we don't actually get 
any actual setup for the Flash, Aquaman, or Cyborg. All we are shown is that they exist through like, and it actually follows with the themes it, um, of the movie the, because let, no, the desert scene, the desert dream sequence, that's a setup to the next film. No, well, that's it's not actually a setup. It's, a it's setup. actually if we actually see the whole story, and this is sort of spoilers for Justice League three, if it ever happens. Um, but it's basically the Flash actually going back in time to warn Bruce. It was, and it was a full thing where so Zack Snyder, so how the MCU basically tries to interweave their movies through end credit scenes. Zack Snyder literally had the movies all intertwined together through the actual movie movies themselves. So basically, and it also does add to the actual movie because it'll, that dream sequence and everything, which it's, it's like a premonition that he has um, with the nightmare, it essentially only adds to his fuel um, that he needs to kill Superman and only yeah. adds to his fear and paranoia. Which is not like a, like, no. Uh, yes, it does add a little bit more fear to Superman and that comes to my points. Like, or like, okay, so in which they really focus on Batman in this film. And it's kind of feels like Superman is just kicked off to the side besides with the court stuff, but that doesn't like add anything to, you know, like the fight because so they really like, re they really try to like the focus on like the reasoning of why Batman hates Superman. It's like, we get it. He lost someone in a freaking, um, he, you know, there was a bunch of people dead and he even lost someone new, which really should have evacuated the building. And it was like, oh, he needed a call for Bruce's way and the pr approval to evacuate the building, which is. What, I, no what I will say, what I will say about that is that actually, so before 9-11 happened, um, it was protocol in built in like super like really tall buildings like that for you to stay in, in the building if like a, a, a if like a big attack happened. This is an alien invasion. I which think is all of, those rules should be, be abandoned. Which is, I'm sure and look, I'm not trying to like get into this this particular topic necessarily, but like you could say like the same thing in a way about like you know, 9-11 and things like that, which is why you see in like in those like horrific videos, you see people jumping out of the tower because, because they were you weren't supposed inside. to leave. No, and so this and is that, basically a, and that was a surprise. And they were also trapped inside because all the floors were, you know, on fire or like the stairs were blocked off so they can't escape. Yes, but also you actually look at the fact that, you know, even looking at what happened in Man of Steel, when you look at it, actually, the things that happened were happening, the buildings were actually more safe than everything that was happening on the ground. If you actually, if you go and, re and if you remember Man of Steel, things that were happening, uh, like buildings were practically more safe than being on the ground. So I, I don't know. And like a survival instinct, I would not be, tr I wouldn't trust to stay in a building. I found that very dumb that it's like, oh, Mr. Bruce, like, am I allowed to leave the building? Yes, you're allowed to leave the building. Okay, thank you. And just like, it's like, no, that's stupid. I feel like you should, I feel like at least, at least get to like lower ground. Cause it's like, I mean, if you want to stay safe, fine, stay in the building, but at least you're on like the whatever, how many floors that building had. Like, he was like on the very top. Like, it, it made no sense to stay up there, which is actually probably even more dangerous than just staying lower, closer to the ground where it's a quicker escape. And so, but when, like that's a net, like a little nitpick, but I, I think they could have just cut that out of the film and had it where Bruce just hated Superman because of all the destruction. And I felt like that scene was just like very dumb. Um, but well, that, that does make it more personal for Batman too, knowing that he was actually, you know, lost someone from his company and everything. Then say that his company building was destroyed, not like, oh, hey, you can leave now. It's like you you don't like I, you don't need my approval or anything. I just wanted to tell you that um, if you're that stupid to stay up there, I mean. I mean so. that's what that's how things were for like company protocols and and different things like that before you know in the real world before 9/11. And this is a world where I'd assume an event like 9/11 hasn't happened, and so this is essentially that you know experience yeah, for them. Yeah, it has this was this this takes place in 2013. That one took place in 2013. Well, and now it's 2015. That doesn't remember. That's that's a comic book universe. That doesn't mean like that doesn't mean 9/11 happened in that universe. I uh, I don't know. I feel like they would mention something or whatever. But all right, moving on to like you know another um, topic. Like where did the kryptonite come from? 
I mean, you said in the last, the cri- you said in the last one where it's like, oh, the, you know, the machine created, but they yeah, never, it was because they, they were ne- terraforming the earth, but they never explain it, it in the movie, from. but they never explained that in the movie because that, that's well, just a theory okay. from you. They never okay, actually no, explain it's it. It's actually not a theory because it's called show don't tell, you know, but the they never movies, showed, the, they, they what, never showed or tell. You, can I finish? <laughs> one of the things that BBS gets, you know, criticized for is not spoon feeding the audience in a way. And people don't say that directly, but BBS does not spoon feed you. It, te- it you know, Zack Snyder is a very good visual storyteller. We'll show you an image and tell a story through that image. When you look at, if you rewatch Man of Steel, the other um, uh, world, and so the world engine lands, obviously one is basically like in uh, Metropolis and the other one is in the Indian Ocean. Mm-hmm. And it tells you that in Man of Steel. And then in BVS, it tells you when it, like right before that sequence where um, those boys go in and find the big chunk of kryptonite, it says Which somewhere they shouldn't be able in, to carry, but okay. in the Indian Ocean. It basically mm-hmm. tells you where the location is. And it's the same location as the world somewhere, engine was in Man of Steel. In which well, yeah. I mean, where would somewhere, it, ex- where somewhere. exactly would it be? I it's mean, literally like by the Indian Ocean. I don't know. So then it is basically telling you that yes, the World Engine basically formed the Kryptonite, and it makes more sense even than like some like comic book explanations mm-hmm. um, with regards to how like Kryptonite gets to Earth because you know with regards to like oh and, sometimes and it's like a meteor it, shower. Yeah, I was about to say sometimes it it's like, like a, a meteor, meteor shower, but then Krypton is like so many years away from earth but like that's just semantics and that's not necessarily important right now so um jimmy olsen is in the movie for five minutes and gets killed off you know you know who jimmy olsen's in the co- and like what also kind of like you know oh pisses me off that he's a part of the cia hmm but he's supposed to be a photo uh, you know like a photography dude for you know pl- for the uh was a daily planet and so I mean, fine, you know, change his character, but I mean, yeah, kill him off, I guess. You could probably piss a bunch of people off that really liked him. And and, it, and there's also another Olsen, which I believe is his cousin cousin or sister. Does it, like, there's a, they mentioned another Olsen, and I believe she's somewhere in the comments as well. And that doesn't go anywhere because they say her name like multiple times, Olsen, Olsen, and it doesn't really go anywhere. And there's like, no, and she doesn't, I don't even think they ever tell her anything that happens to Jimmy Olsen. So as, but again, that's also like a little nitpick, but I feel like they could have done well, something I like mean, that. Like, like I mentioned, you know, Zack Snyder was doing a five movie Superman arc and Jimmy Olsen wouldn't have had any place in this story that he wanted to tell. But make him a CIA agent, which... You know, Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen isn't always a photographer in the comics. I know it's like an Elseworld comic, but like in Superman Red Sun, he's a government agent. And so, like, he's not always just some photographer. And like I, like I said, even though that's an Elseworld comic, all movies, regardless of what it is, whether it's any DC movie, Marvel movie, unless it's part of the main continuity of, like, DC or Marvel comics, it's all Elseworld. So it's like Jimmy Olsen has been, isn't just a photographer in comics. And then here he is, like, a government agent, like he was in, like, Superman Red Sun, for example. I guess. But uh, which also kind of brings us to the frame of Superman part which was terrible and the theatrical it was like, you know, it did, it did, no, yeah, the, the, it did not make sense in the theatrical cut. And, and in the ultimate edition, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. But at the same time, when, when the biopsy comes along, you would still see the bullets in that, you know, the bullet holes in those bodies. Well, you, know? you, you, you don't do autopsy tests on burnt bodies. I feel like you like, sh- like my, I feel like you, actually might do a biopsy no matter what on a not not only that but it's not like that happened on u.s soil either that happened in nairobi um and so because of that you know and that's the thing the government was going in there secretly the government like the government was trying to do like a secret mission or whatever and they had and cameras so- ready to go and somehow they don't and somehow they think superman did all that damage and which is a nerve problems like superman is like you know all over the place in this film is that he they think he's do, does all this damage and like in no matter of time and but he can't you know do something later on it, i mean like superman's supposed to be faster than a bullet and so and like that kind of like 
kind of goes away and later on in the film but again like they had cameras set up if you if you actually look at those cameras you would be able to see there's no superman there even like even though that like, he's fetching the bullet you slow it down you'd be able to see him if he was even there i mean like what the hell you know like this is what i said in the previous uh movie where movie review with the like the amount of technology is in this film you should be able to you know do something with that technology and figure stuff out but they don't ever go back to that like you know like the footage even though you know he did destroy the drone but that's bluetooth all that shit is bluetooth so they have that on a file somewhere you know knowing you know and can look at that all that type of stuff but they don't and so and which comes to another problem with you know the capital um, building blowing up but that's a but we'll get to that later um but i mean it's not like i don't have a problem with them framing superman i feel like they should just you know not sh- shoot the bodies more of you know immediately burn them i guess then that wouldn't have been like my f- you know kind of pet peeves like you guys would still be able to tell that there's bullet holes in those men but okay fine whatever and which is also another problem they can superman can hear lois lane from miles away with you know when she doesn't really scream or does anything wrong and and next he can't tell when she gets kidnapped or in distress later on in the film so it's kind of like it makes a couple things on that so i i can i can you know can i give you an explanation on that so basically at that Superman is known in the comics for like following Lois Lane around, Mm -hmm. especially when he knows she's going to be doing something dangerous. And I know you're probably thinking about why he couldn't find more. So it makes perfect sense, obviously. Like, yeah, he's, you know, keeping track of what Lois is doing in Nairobi in the beginning of the movie. And so you'd be like, okay, yeah, he he saves Lois, but why couldn't he save his mom? The thing is, he's not always listening out for, he, he has no idea Lex knows that he's Superman. He doesn't know. And so why would he have any reason to fear for, you know, Lois's life in terms of like Lex or someone trying to frame him or you know someone trying to get his mom who was from my understanding was still in Smallville mm-hmm. and so you uh so because he's not looking out for her of course he you know isn't going to find her plus you know it's, it's and this was a deleted scene um this was kind of like confirmed by Zack Snyder um a while ago how like they cut a scene and I don't think it's super super necessary honestly it's, um, I don't even think it's in the Ultimate Edition either. No, it's not. It's not in the yeah. Ultimate Edition. Um, where they, it was, there was a scene that was deemed too dark that was cut, um, mm-hmm. where it's like Superman surveying the city and trying to like listen for his mom, but being unable to bear it, um, because of he's hearing all these other people in trouble, and so he just like shuts it off because he's like, okay, I can't like deal with this. You know, I need to go find my mom. Um, and like I'm only hearing more and more people in peril, and so I honestly I, I think I, that scene I guess could have been I, cool I mean, in there. I was, I was gonna mention that later on, but with you just mentioning that, I guess now she was not gagged. She could literally made any sound, you know. She could have started singing, you know, whatever random song that she would want. As super Superman would have been a year. I was like, okay, I po- I point point her, and e- even if she wasn't making any sound, well, I could, mean, she, she could fly she's around. Like- as fast as he can without Lex knowing, and he well, could, and so I mean, one Martha has like you know a bunch of terrorists capturing her throughout her life. It's not like she's trained for this situation. Of course, she's gonna like just ob- listen to them and be quiet. Second off, Lex says, "Ooh, if you fly away, Martha, you know if he, you know if you no, kill me, he, he still Martha away. dies. If you fly away, Martha also dies. But if he, you kill the bat, he, he Martha literally, lives. He could have literally faked flying to Gotham." X made a turnaround, flew as fast as he could without Lex knowing, because Lex actually just flies off without even looking where he went. So, well, you also have to remember that Superman doesn't has no idea where his mom is. His mom last exactly. time he knew was in Smallville, and yeah, yet but, you know now they're holding him. He, basically, now they're he, holding her in Gotham. He is the fat. He can he flies as fast as he, he can fly as fast as he can. Like he's literally fat, like faster than the speed of light. He he can literally ha- fly around the planet with no problem, and he will be able to find her. Uh, but also think about and this: he so, also, so he also can see through things. So, so people, helps. so people, you know, will bring that up. And when you do that, you kind of take out the human element of Superman. It's like he's still just a guy like us who still goes through these human emotions, who still has these same struggles. So when he finds that they literally you know they gagged his mom and like are holding her hostage and threatening to kill her 
Like you see how distraught he is on the rooftop scene with Lex. And then you actually, you know, so of course his mind's going to be scrambled. He's not going to know what to do. And so of course the thing that he's like, okay, I need to go confront Batman maybe see if he can help me. Obviously like you see in the movie. he doesn't really try to. There's been multiple points of that fight where you can be like, hey, 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 whoa, 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 hold on. I'm, they, Lex Luthor can't, cannot my mom. And he literally, and before even like the kryptonite came involved with, in that fight, he could have literally, you know, holds Batman like that and like almost, you know, to like a force choke ability without him moving. And like, just like, hey, Lex Luthor kidnapped my mom. I need your help. Okay, yes. two things, two, uh, or a couple things about that. So one, hindsight is twenty twenty. Superman at this point in his career, has no idea what kryptonite is, has no idea Batman has anything that can hurt him, and obviously, like I said, doesn't know the effects of kryptonite or like that there's, but you know, he, but if you, something but if out really, there that can actually but if hurt him. Really wanted to settle down. The so because he because he actually kind of antagonizes like Batman a little and the bit reason by throwing why, him around. The, yes, the reason why Superman does that is because so Batman is just blinded by rage and anger, um, and so when you actually see Batman. You know, in this situation, he doesn't have doesn't care what Superman is going to say. He's just not looking at viewing a Superman as a human at all. Um, and so, you know, he's not going to care. So Superman is like, okay, this guy's angry. This guy doesn't care. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show him that I'm the boss. So I'm, he's going to throw him around a little bit. He's like, Superman in his mind is like, he he can't hurt me. He has nothing that can hurt me. You know, I'm just going to throw him around and get him to submit. You know, like he says, stay down. If I wanted it, he'd be dead already. But then, obviously, the wild card that Batman has is the kryptonite, which Superman isn't even aware exists. And so when that happens, after that moment, Superman is essentially fighting for his life. And so then that turns the whole situation on its head. That's what is something a lot of people don't actually consider, is, what, is the fact that when Superman goes there, it's not like he knows Batman is kryptonite. If then, yeah, he probably would have approached the situation differently. But because well, he, he has no idea well, what kryptonite is, he's well, like, no. okay, yeah. Batman can't do anything. Okay, because, you know, you look at it like this. If you like, you know, you're, um, I mean, if you're fighting basically like a squirrel, okay, a squirrel you can easy, and easily catch and just throw around, you know, are you actually going to really be like, okay, Mr. Squirrel, here's what's going on? Or are you going to be like, okay, and like, and the squirrel's not listening to you at all, or are you just going to throw it around, beat it up, and like beat it to submission? That's what he's thinking about he's going to do with Batman to get Batman to actually listen to him. But Superman is just wasting even more time, which in according to like, you know, you know, the timer that they put down, he only has like half an hour. So if Superman really wanted to get this over with and like, you know, he could have, you know, easily ended the situation with no problem by just putting his hand down on Batman, like, stop it, quit it. And, you know, and he could have, he could have threw his, tra- like, you know, tamper and, th- and like, you know, wail his arms around as much as he could. And, you know, Superman been like there waiting until he, you know, calms down and whatever and like no problem. And so, I mean, like, and again, it, it's more to like, I don't buy the fight because of Lex Luthor, which brings me to my next problem with the film. I don't freaking like the Lex Luthor in this film. And I don't know if it's Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg playing him or it's, or the writing. I don't like, I don't like them. I mean, Jesse Eisenberg is a good actor. I liked him in like, you know, um, Zombieland. I liked him in that, but I just don't buy him as Lex Luthor. And, and, I don't know if it was the director of Zack Snyder or it's just him, you know, doing whatever he wants. Cause when I look at Lex Luthor, I just see Jesse Eisenberg. I literally don't see Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor in the comics is like intimidating. He's literally like very intimidating. And like, and like the reason why he hates Superman is because of, um, because he fools his plans in the comic books. Here, Lex Luthor has no reason to hate Superman. Like he literally has no reason to hate him. And it, and the reasoning, he, even the reasoning that he has, he kind of even fucks up his own plans with the Capitol by blowing it up, which is just like you know trying to frame Superman that he did the Capitol because they, there's even on like news like um, promos like oh did, Su- did Superman have any like any involvement in the blowing up the Capitol? Like if Superman wanted to fucking kill everyone in the uh, Capitol. He, would, he doesn't even need anyone's help. He would have lasered their eyes off and you would have got that scene like in like, you know, Man of Steel with the lasers going through the building. Then you would know that was Superman. Like, it's like, it makes no sense because, and even like, who would Superman get on his side to blow up the Capitol building? It makes no sense. He's, he, he, he's like, 
basically like you said no one ha- knows like his weakness or he doesn't even know his own weakness he could have walked in and done whatever he wanted and so it makes like it makes no sense and they even knew it was a bombing they just don't know exactly th- who it was and so it's like like sleuther basically messed up his own fucking plan and through and like you know throughout everything and so okay here's my rebuttal <laughs> so nothing wrong with you liking this uh n- nothing wrong with you disliking this portrayal of lex you know everyone's got their preferences but a few things so one this jesse eisenberg's version of lex is comic accurate he's bur- he's based on um the lex luthor from superman birthright who has long red hair who's eccentric who's like a younger lex who is basically like too smart for his own good and so that's essentially like the lex luthor that he's based off of um you know i I think i mentioned john byrne in our man of steel review and so he's the guy who basically um made lex luthor into like that intimidating businessman that we see like say like clancy brown's lex luthor that we see in superman the animated series um and so which that's still my um favorite uh version of lex luthor but like i still love you know jesse eisenberg's uh lex luthor like so lex luthor in the comics is primarily someone who hates superman because superman has power so, like, you even see, like, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, based off his motivations, like, alone, is essentially the best Lex Luthor we've had in movies. Because, and this is why. So, Lex doesn't hate, in comics, he doesn't hate Superman because he just foils his plans. Like, you feel like, um, with regards it's, to, it's like, Lex makes, Luthor. It, no, well, it, 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 if you see him, if it you see it, that's what makes Lex Luthor start If you see him Superman. in... If you see him in Superman the movie, he hates Superman because, oh, he's getting in the way of his real estate plans. Exactly. But Lex Lu- no, Lex Luthor in the comics usually hates Superman because Superman has power. And Lex, like, That's is essentially... one of the comics. That's one of the comics, and those are on one of the unlikable comics. Because no one... The, like, the one thing that I hear about people that, that like about Lex Luthor is the older version. Because he... He like knows his place and he he has a little bit more of a knowledge and he knows what he's doing. This one is just like I, I'm gonna just go I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna have no plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna you know put I'm gonna send one of my minions to push a lady onto a train track, but somehow didn't get caught in the middle of a crowd of people. I mean it, it, I, I'm the smartest man around in the world, so it should work. And so no, Lex so Lex is obsessed with power. That's one of the themes of BVS. It's about power and um, the you know the the abuse of power as well as um, you know the lack of p- power someone has. You know, like as so Lex says, you know, books are knowledge and knowledge is power. And you know, like he says, the bittersweet pain among men is having knowledge with no power because that is paradoxical. And that's one of the things he's like he he has the view that he has so much knowledge and you know so lex's motivation for hating superman in this movie is ultimately because superman has power and he is projecting his view of god onto superman because like the, so lex Luthor in comics in the comics has like huge daddy issues okay and so in bvs he has huge daddy issues as well and so you see him how he says you know no man in the sky I interviewed when i was a boy delivering such a daddy trophy. Of abomination. that's a, such a trophy plot i mean that's how it is in the comic and, and so do, do you ever hear people saying oh i i really love that lex luther has daddy issues oh well, it's, that's it, be- it's because so many people have such a fickle surface level understanding of lex luther because all they see him is in you know the bruce tim universe superman the animated series just like the animated series all that and so it, that is something that doesn't either doesn't explore it as much or people just view like that surface level oh intimidating it, businessman it's, because it's, but it's, he it's hates used, superman because it's been used over and over so people hate it because it's like a very it's like a number one trope in movies and so H- having daddy issues yes it's like because it like to make them a villain it's like oh because i had daddy issues it's, like, it's not because he has daddy issues that he's a villain. Well, no, it's because it's because he is viewing see. Superman as this godlike figure who has all this power, and he's projecting his view of God onto Superman. And because of that, he hates Superman. Because, and I mean, it's it's one of those you know another of those cool Zack Snyder things where the first thing that, that you know, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this later. But when Doomsday, Doomsday, the oh, first God. thing that he does after he creates Doomsday is Doomsday tries to punch Lex Luthor and Superman. You know, is the one who is the man in the sky who is intervening when he's getting, you know, about to just get destroyed by Doomsday's fist. But about the um, about the Capitol building plot. So if you paid attention to the movie, the whole point of the Capitol building was not to frame Superman. No one in the if you see in the media, they say 
question was Superman involved because they know how much power Superman has. Wait, However, a fucking big exp- what? But like, what? It, it says was Superman involved because of how much power he has. So it could he no have sense. stopped it? That's why it says was which, he involved. It's like oh, BVS I was looking exp- for it. It's like BVS. No, it's yeah. he says that. But guess what? If you paid attention to the movie and watched the Ultimate Edition, it was lined in lead. Yes. It is distinctly said that the wheelchair was lined in lead. And so Superman, like so, you know, so, cannot so see through yes, lead. So like yes. Luthor. Is that like even explained in the comments? I don't remember that at all. It's like, oh, I, you know, it's like, you know, they're like in the border room yes, of that, writing the comments. Like, you know what? I think, I think we should make Superman, you know, if, allergic you know, to like you, lead. It's not allergic to lead. It's he can't see through lead. And if you actually really knew, X-ray vi- X rays straight up cannot see through lead. Superman has X ray vision, which means Alien that you know X ray vision. And but it's still he cannot see through lead. If you have a problem with that, talk to the comics. Oh, I will. I'm, let, let's get their email right here. Um, but no, um, whatever. I don't really care about that part, to be honest. Um, but you know, it's just like little nitpicks that kind of hurt the film that just cause even more drama. Like you know, like the the bullets, like you know, the lane bullet stuff. You know, she didn't tell Clark about it. I was like, this is gonna create drama. I like, oh, you didn't tell me that you had a bullet from the scene it's like yeah big deal it's like i don't know i i I, it's like you could you know uh, you could have told me it's like shut up i don't it's like this is a pointless plot which it kind of it's like it go it does go somewhere but at the end of the day it kind of doesn't because lois lane was going to get kidnapped either way and you know used as a plot for superman uh for superman to come and save her so it kind of adds nothing to it and so, well, I, I mean, Le- 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 Pe- it's very possible that Lex wouldn't have even had to capture Lois like that if she didn't, you know, if she wasn't so nosy. Like, Lois, she was, she was going to she, she so, get captured either way. That was the p- whole point of Lex Luthor's plan. I mean, regardless of whether or not she, she got captured, the whole reason Lex gets, you know, basically, I guess you could say, like, exposed at the end and gets sent off to Arkham Asylum. Um, or, well, like prison and then Batman the to Ar- 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 Arkham ship. Asylum. Now, it, the reason is because if you actually actually really pay attention to the movie, it says that um, the whole report on Lex Luthor is and how he's setting sent to jail is written by Lois Lane. And so one of the reasons why she doesn't tell Clark is she doesn't want Clark to worry. Like you see, it's like it's like what you see for like anyone and their significant other nowadays. It's basically like they don't want their other significant other to worry, especially if it's something that they can handle and they can take care of. So they're like, okay. I'm just going to try to take care of myself. Plus, it very much is in line with Lois's character in the comics. How she's a gutsy reporter. She wants to take care of things by herself. She wants her credit. She wants to get it done. What I will say, um, one of the complaints about BVS, and it's not something that you complain about, but one of the complaints that some people have is that, um, you know, BVS, it like misrepresents Superman and Batman, which I factually, well, like, which I straight up say, no, it doesn't. And the reason why, so I'm not going to get it. If I really go into detail and basically um, show how I, basically, I would ev- say I would say they give Superman less uh, development in this film, and they look and they give more of Batman because like at like at the, like I said at the beginning, Batman has a really good reason to hate Superman, but Superman doesn't really have a, a good reason to hate Batman. Besides, of he doesn't agree with you know what he's doing in Gotham but you know he doesn't really understand Gotham is a different city and so which makes sense but you know he but they don't show him enough like, you know you know diving into like the reason why and you know trying to fear and trying to build him up and like you know maybe give it a, get like an understanding and so because when the fight comes along he's like I Bruce I'm sorry I was wrong it's like wrong about what wait huh like it's like it's like what do you what were you wrong about you're actually kind of right like batman's like you know kind of a dick you know he's kind of you know you know killing people for no reason well no i wouldn't say for no reason he's just he has a different version of justice and so and it's like and i wish they kind of you know built superman a little bit more up to give him a little bit more reason because like superman goes into gotham to interview people that like seen things from the batman like what he did and so and like they don't but that's only like two minutes of screen time for that like he goes into like gotham for like other reasons you know to figure out more case about like lex luther and like all this framing stuff that's going on but he doesn't really go in investigate like batman um 
So I feel like they. But yeah, but, no, but, but, no, yeah, but just continuing basically what I'm saying, which I will, I will, um, I guess rebut the points that you made. But, um, but just with regards to like a lot of people say that Zack Snyder doesn't understand Superman or Batman and things like that. So what I will oh, okay. say, I thought and, you were and, going and, a different direction. Oh no, no, and I can, and I can still, you know, talk about like what the points you just made. But just like people will say that, like, oh, it, the movie, you know, it. It is bad portrayals of the characters and things like that. Which, That's because they well, once again, I could, I could, I, I could go, you know, choice by choice with Superman and Batman in Man of Steel and BVS, and basically show you how almost every decision that they make aligns with their character in the comics. But that's going to take a while, so I'm not going to do that. So what I will just say right now is Dan Jurgens, who, like I've said, is like the greatest Superman writer of all time. Um, if anyone ha- like he, you know, he wrote the death of Superman. He did like an amazing stuff um, with Superman in, in action comics, and and um, he so like I said, probably the greatest Superman writer of all time. Probably is like the you know the authority on you know what goes with Superman. Um, and if anyone's opinion is is worthwhile when it comes to that character, it's his. Um, and he himself loves Man of Steel. Um, he loves BVS as well, and. Um, and he has said that, um, you know, he definitely thinks that Zack Snyder understands basically the character and Henry Cavill's portrayal of him is excellent. Um, so there, I mean, there we go for, for Superman. And if someone disagrees, you know, that, and they don't like the, like the portrayal, that's totally fine. Um, but like if someone actually thinks they understand Superman better than Dan Jurgens does, they're, in, to put it nicely, they're an egotistical narcissist. Um, and but then going on to to Batman, and obviously not saying talking about you, Austin. I'm talking about people who just say like, yeah, um, who are like, oh yeah, Zack Snyder doesn't understand Superman, and things like that. I which is not that, you're, you're not yeah. you're yeah you're not one of those people. Um, but you know, yeah. So like either you know those people who who accuse who basically say that either they themselves don't understand Superman or they didn't pay attention to the movies. And so next we have Batman, and so basically, obviously the big thing is the killing. Mm-hmm. that people will criticize and not you um but like i said just people in general and so what i will say about the killing is first off every single live action batman except for george clooney has killed and yet ben affleck's batman is the only one who gets crap for that too be like batman has killed before in comics as well as the stuff he does in the arkham games is straight up like yes if that was not video game logic there'd be like hundreds of people who'd be dead mm-hmm. third BVS is the only movie, the only Batman movie to say that Batman killing is wrong. Um, essentially, like he is that Zack Snyder took Batman on this character arc, basically, like you know, and it always portrays Batman killing in a negative light, whether that's everything that Alfred is telling him, um, whether that's everything that Superman is doing with regards to investigating. And it basically takes him on this character arc, and we will see it continued in Zack Snyder's Justice League, where he feels guilt over that, and his redemption arc happens and stops with. Um, after Superman sacrifices himself, and that is when his redemption arc is essentially complete, where he's basically returning back to his old ways and um, and getting rid of that, you know, just rage that was blinding him. I feel like it would have been a little bit better if Batman. Yes, but got, I, know, and, I, I think if Batman got his solo film before this, and like you know, did the arc of you know him not killing, and next at the end of the film he starts killing, and you know, if you like, you know give reasons why he was you know is now killing. well he only he only starts killing after the black zero event which is like where yeah you and know, like and superman Rob, and robin dies during that time period and which gives him a little bit more reason to kill because yeah which i don't really like because of the version of the joker that we get kills robin which is like robin i i actually really like robin i don't think a lot of people like robin but i'm one of the few um one of the people that do i think like people robin. like robin i i'd say people like i robin. think people started liking robin when he becomes nightwing i think that's where it kind of starts um but um but yeah um, I, so i so i don't i don't think he would have needed a solo movie it's similar to like it, the movie very much explains and shows where Batman is at and shows his history and everything you need to know to about sh- him. It's just, it's, sho- simil- it's just trying to shove it's so much to stuff like- in one movie and it just doesn't like... It, I mean, it can work, but it do- at the same time, it really... It really so, does. it's like not like so a good here's, idea to do. Here's one of the things with regards to how much stuff is in BBS. Obviously, it's a long movie, but BBS is actually structured like a five-act Shakespearean revenge tragedy. 
um, that's something Chris Terrio, um, one of the writers, or I guess you can say he's he was basically the main writer on the movie, talks about. And it, that's why there's and basically in line with Shakespeare and revenge tragedies, um, they basically have like five acts. So there's so much in it and the way that it's structured. Um, and honestly, like usually like those type of like Shakespearean revenge tragedies, they have they have even more stuff in it. So like keeping in line with what BVS is supposed to be, it very much is in line with like, you know, ha- what they were going for. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like. I know you were talking about like how they don't build up why Superman doesn't like that. I mean, I think it's very well built up because remember, like I said, one of the themes of BVS is power um, and like the abuse of power and, um, and like where is, I think, I guess like, I thought like what, like who gets to decide who does what. And I think you will, when you look at, you know, the type of person that Clark Kent is and, and how he was raised um, you see him, watching batman in like gotham and be the judge jury and executioner and this is also lex like setting things up he's having his guys um basically communicate with different prisoners and and everything he has connections all that to basically kill all the people that batman brands and so that only you know fuels the fire with superman because he's someone who wants justice to be dealt and batman has just become so jaded and so brutal that he he is even you know crossed the line um and so you look at you know all those things and it makes sense and so does superman hate batman as much as batman hates superman no but it's that conflict is built up because it's a battle of ideologies throughout the film and so when it eventually does happen then it's but, like but that, you know, but that kind of gets thrown out when Lex is like, go kill the bat. You know, if you want well, to save your mother, it's like, okay, well, that whole entire plot with Superman hating Batman is like kind of gone. Well, the whole reason, the whole reason for that, I think, is because of the fact that um, Superman, his dislike of, of Batman. And another one of the things with BVS is the fact that we, we when we don't communicate with, with each other, we come to misunderstandings. And so Batman doesn't necessarily communicate with superman and batman so batman doesn't communicate with superman superman doesn't communicate with batman they just see each other through these lens that the media portrays them um and that ultimately causes the build-up in conflict and so when you see the things that lex Luthor does and the way he manipulates superman as well as batman um you honestly see the fact that like okay i would have liked he's he's built he's building up this conflict and then it's the breaking point where Superman has no other choice, and he does. He, he already doesn't he like doesn't, Batman, but so, he doesn't want so he to. doesn't. But he doesn't. Well, that's want just to. that's because that's the type of guy that he is. I know, but you know, like no, even but, even in but but in the comments there, but in the comments, soup. They, it's not like Luthor like forcing Superman and Batman to fight. Like they legitimately want to fight in the comments, and that's why I wanted here, which is that which this fight is only fucking eight minutes long, and, and like. I, I, I well, more. Just for just for reference, if you if you're talking about the Dark Knight Returns, that fight is incredibly short as well. Uh, and again, that's a comment, but for a movie standpoint, I would have liked it a little bit longer. Um, like maybe because like you know like for example like Civil War, like Civil War has sprinkles of like fights between you know Captain Marvel. Uh, Cap- I was about to say Captain Marvel. Uh, Evans not gonna be happy. Um, like Captain America and um, you know Tony Stark. Like they have their banter. And like they, you know, they kind of get physical a little bit, and it's like, like the physical stuff happens. And I, I get the airport, and next it really gets physical, at like you know at the end. So I so they- I want to I, I want to ask you something though. That's I wasn't going to bring this up, but since you brought up Civil War, so based off your logic that Superman and Batman's conflict that they have built up is thrown out the window because Lex Luthor asks him to go kill him, is Tony and cap's conflict thrown out the window because tony only ends up fighting cap and winter soldier because he realizes that bucky killed his mom and dad well for one tony stark is a hothead and 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 like and that's also kind of you know you know his parents he, he kind of died at the same time and it's not like lex luther killed his mom if if lex luther killed superman's mom you know lex luther would be dead and so the well i mean between- lex luther is literally holding superman's mom and saying but yeah but he can't kill her be- i mean yeah no, no, he can't like uh superman can't kill lex or they will kill martha and so and the difference between this is that that the hate like the the mystery of like um tony stark's parents were like you know building up 
for so long and tony he can't yeah and actually you know at this moment how wait like, how is and look, and look, i don't i'm not try, i'm trying to like just have a stick to bvs because you don't want to have this super long but how is the mystery of tony's parents super built up like well, like we only like, like ever he, see it because he, 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 he never he cares even like because he cares about his mom, mom. Well, he no cares. he'd never we had never even seen his mom before Civil War. Every single time in all the Iron Man movies, he only talks about his dad. But hey, let's let's just stay on topic with BVS because well, like well, otherwise it's gonna go really long. It, it's gonna get yeah, it would be indifferent if this podcast. But uh, let's move on, I guess, so we don't you know be here forever. Then um, let's move back. Let's move actually to Lex, Lex Luthor a little bit. Um, so this is kind of like leading up to like the creation of Doomsday, which I. I don't fucking like Doomsday because Doomsday looks like fucking dr- like a at, like a drug addict Caillou, and so which which I will say is comic accurate for when Doomsday is a re- first born. But when but the he, way Doomsday he's but the created, way but the way he's created is with like um, the embryos of you know Krypton like Kryptonians that which Superman destroyed. So in which in the comic, they, the reason why Doomsday looks the way he well, looks is because so- of the Kryptonian. In this movie, Doomsday should have looked like Lex Luthor with long fucking red hair. But, well, you know. Actually, like, a, he is, Doomsday was created through Zod's corpse. Um, second one. off. In the comics, there, there were like, are, like, like there basically are, all of them, whatever was left. There are so, so a few things. One, there are so many different like doomsdays and like ways doomsday is created in comics and animation um nobody complained about any of those until you know we have this sometimes he's just an experiment sometimes he's created on krypton and has been around for thousands of years I think it's because people don't like lex Luthor creating doomsday and that i'm probably on that train because i i feel like doomsday was just shoved at the end of this movie and well just doomsday to kill just just to kill superman in which doomsday like- doomsday very much follows it actually in the themes of bvs as well actually if you think if it's really look and study bvs it really it's it's kind of about like you know because you you even see during the fight like doomsday he looks up at this this big statue of superman that metropolis has created and it's like the way that the movie it because doomsday was almost essentially supposed to represent how one side of how people view superman and um obviously that statue of basically like a god is how another side of people view him because like i said you know doomsday uh, superman is an extremely polarizing figure and so um also this isn't even the original doomsday if you actually when lex goes to originally create doomsday um the uh the, the kryptonian ship basically tells him um it has been decreed by the Council of Krypton that um, none shall give sight to um, a deformity with um, basically with, like with, su- with such hate and memory. Um, and then Lex said, you know, and so once again, it was like, oh, never again shall, you know, this happen. And so, and Lex asked, you know, where is the Council of Krypton? And obviously, you know, they're all dead. And so he says, okay, then teach me. Because this is not the original doomsday there is an original doomsday out there and so this is basically like and and one of the like i personally would have had probably doomsday spikes grow a little bit faster um to essentially like sort of become doomsday at the end with all the that's a a slight slight change i might have made but i don't really have a problem with what they did because it makes perfect sense with regards to the comics um but with regards to just like you know doomsday it's his. I, I get people don't necessarily like his look, but that's what he's essentially what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be a deformity. That's what it's called, and so that's why he's ugly and he just doesn't have all. This, he's super symmetrical with his spikes and everything. I don't know. I, I, it's just and like even the reasoning for like. Uh, okay, so like the reason how he uh, Lex Luthor creates Doomsday is by cutting you know Zod's fingers off, you know, and and like you know putting on his own to be able to get into the ship and gain access and he uses zod as the dead body even the ship is like hey you're not allowed to do this um i mean like the council is like you know all, you know says like even but they're even, dead so the but, ship is, is able to do it because the council of krypton but, is no longer but around not, but not even but even when they're dead they shouldn't be able to because of this reasoning like the even the ship's like no matter what what um like no matter what we can't create more 
of uh, of krypton or uh, kryptonians whatever it said and so um and like in and even the ship like uh, identifies like the host as i was like wait but you used but you got access because of Zod's fa- you're an imposter and the ship should have shut down and so like it's the ship just gave him access and it's like tell me everything and the ship's like sure i guess i mean what else i gotta do in this fucking movie i guess i mean you i mean th- when you really look at it, that's all the security that the ship, which is also an al- uh, which is also an alien ship. How the fuck does Zod ha- not Zod, but um, Lex Luthor know the capability of the ship and what it can do? If Lex also has the has Zod's uh, uh, key, essentially. That's what ultimately allows him to unlock and have access to it. Doesn't really matter what you look like. It's ultimately about do you have that key. But you have that. So. But also, you also need the DNA of a Kryptonian to be able to get any more accesses. And he even had to cut his own fucking hand to create Doomsday, which you should be, um, which you should need um, cr- um, Kryptonian blood to be able to even do that. And no, that's not how it works in this universe. Yeah. Th- God. Quick question. You're getting so aggravated over this. Do you have the same aggravation when the MCU takes far more liberties from comics? Give me an example. I mean, just regards to, I mean, I'll use Spider-Man and how he has a super technological suit basically starting off from Iron Man. He, he, but he does in the comics. You know, do you, do you, I... yeah, he does. He, he, he gets a suit from Iron Man in the comics. It's the same you, exact suit. Question, do, do, you, do you hate how they changed Thanos' motivation? Well, no, Thanos' motivation, well, see, in the comics for Thanos, it's for death. You know, you know the, la- the lady of death or whatever they yeah, call her. Yeah, but that's, that's but, different. So but, do, you, do, you not, do, you, do you like how they did Fat Thor? Do you like how they turned but, Professor Hulk into a, into a wimp? No, do I don't. Like I don't. I, Oh, let me explain. I don't really like Professor Thor. I found Fat Thor pretty funny, and I don't like how they kept poking at it. Like you know, throughout the film, I felt like you know, five minutes was funny. Like okay, let's move on. Um, but the motivate, but the motivation for Thanos was so good, you kind of forget about you know the, the Lady of Death. You kind of forget about that motivation. It was pro- and it kind of looked like the motivation was sort of there, and like you know, and like even like Red Skull. You know when he was like you know um like you know protecting the soul stone he was kind of, he kind of looks like lady death so it kind of it, so it kind of images thanos of like you know if it like kind of like you know it's like hey you, sort of i'm like imaging like lady of death and so it's like it's there but it isn't and but that's not like really the main motivation but like the like Thanos was like Thanos is like motivation was so good like you know wiping out half the planet because he feels like um the universe has failed it, and like you oh, know no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. Look, like look I I I agree the Thanos is you know and, and like I said like I'm not trying to get super sidetracked um but at my my whole and I agree with you like Thanos had great motivations I like the change that they did my whole point was it seems you have a little bit of double standards with marvel versus dc a little bit but, maybe like it, yes and but it's just the way that they tell it you know? and the way they even, show it well well because here's the thing like even that it's like and once again not trying to get super off topic but like with spider-man with in the mcu how they just make him fully rely on tony stark okay when, well, what about lex, when, lex in this film then how how the hell do newcomers know that lex is the smartest man like what like and like and like the first scene that we see him is like oh 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 hi it's like it, it's like comes off weird it's like i don't buy you as a smart man i buy you as a fucking creep it's that, all like, an act lancers it, it, in people's mouths it, it's it's all an act so that people don't realize that he actually like is an evil genius if you even see how he when batman confronts him at the end of the movie and when he you know has that that incredible wordplay you know that chris terrio dialogue where he says this is how it all caves in civilization on the wane manners out the window you know when he says he says oh i'm insane i'm not even fit to stand trial you know and he's like just messing with batman being like hey this is i'm just faking it like this is all an act for me to, you know, for people to not expect that I'm an actual threat. And then but Batman is like, haha, I've arranged to get you transferred to Arkham Asylum in Gotham. You know, um, I saw some friends there, they're expecting you. 
Um, and so, yeah, but no, I just, I just wanted to bring that whole thing up. Like, cause I was like, huh, maybe, you know, you, you know, cause you're like, you got, you got so frustrated because even though Doomsday has so many different like ways that people create him in both animation and comics, it seems like you're just super focused on like, Oh, and this per- universe, they changed it up, even though they changed it up in so many other different DC it's universes. It's probably mostly because I don't like this Lex Luthor that I find it fucking stupid where the ship just gives him whatever he wants, and like I kind of see him as an idiot, and just you know, just like you know. Well, then I guess uh, then I guess his act, I guess his act worked then. No, no, that's not. <laughs> no, it's bad writing. It's not his act. It's not even close to his act. It's just fucking terrible writing. Like it doesn't. Like I, I would have liked it if le- if you know, like for example, in the Halloween film. Um, the 2018 Halloween film, you know, like how the, like the new doctor was mostly in the back, you know, watching how Michael Myers would like, you know, would be released. Like he kind of wanted to see how what would happen if he was just released and, you know, and going out and killing people. And when, and when he started getting physical, people hated that. People com- didn't like that at all. If Lex Luthor was m- mostly like that, I would be honestly fine with it because Lex Luthor is just sitting in the background and like, and cause that would be a clever plan. It's like sitting in the background, just like smelling, you know, victory and, and like getting away with it because no one expected him to be, you know, behind everything. But when he's just like, Oh yeah, you know, everything was you know, all that, you know, that all that stuff, you know, with the, you know, Capitol building, you know, with the, you know, the letters sent to Batman, that, that was all me. And so that kind of just throws. I mean, yeah, because he's because he's being proactive and actually he himself is actually doing stuff, and we the audience know that, but the we, people in the movie don't know that. But, it's not like it's a mystery movie. But no, it's no, actually I, showing us that Lex actually is, and it's showing him act on him but, like, as the smartest man in the, the world. Start, and and it just kind of throws like the whole entire reasoning for the fight, which is only fucking eight minutes. I'm, but it's just like just throws the whole time reasoning out the window it's like it, you kind of lose that tension a little bit you lose it you lose that tension a little bit but it's like oh the only question that you kind of see throughout the film is like oh is superman going to kill batman or is super or is batman going to kill superman but we no, that's not going to happen because you know it's supposed to be a five movie trilogy and you know they're going to do the justice league and you know instead of you know actually you know instead because like you know you don't like you know people saying like you know dc the dcu should be doing solo films to set up you know you know yeah like these big yeah it's it's not necessary for any for any franchise no but i think it it could have i mean like if they did if they did like you know if they gave like instead of like doing like 10 movies to set up like the avengers movie like you know the avengers did they should have done like super man of steel batman then batman v superman um wonder woman justice league and that's true to how it goes. i mean you because... don't you don't need to do something like that like you even i mean star wars what did obi-wan kenobi need his own solo movie before episode four uh yes what no. <laughs> um but like like but again like we even kind of like who is this old man like there's so much mystery behind him and next they give him his solo film well they give they're giving him a solo tv show and they say kind of fill in more character arcs with the prequels and that's what they kind of should have done here is like you know phil like they should well just- that's the thing if if you really want to do that the whole thing before warner bros hijacked everything um and who knows you may still get this but um was to have ben affleck have a batman um and we'll see this we'll see this set up in zack snyder's just league where lex luthor will end up recruiting deathstroke to kill batman but um you i I don't i don't care i don't like him i'm not gonna no but if i'm I'm just just, if they cast if they cast deathstroke right then fine no, oh no, Joe Manganiello is Deathstroke. He's he's that's like perfect casting. Okay. But no, basically the whole point. No, what I'm getting at is they're literally gonna if if like the Ben Affleck HBO Max like Batman miniseries happens, it's going to explore. It's going to take place after Zack Snyder's Justice League and explore, um, you know, him how he got to the point that he is and basically be a prequel and, and like a sequel essentially at the, at the same time. I believe it's going to explore like his history, like with like Robin and everything, as well as show what happens after Zack Snyder's Justice League and have him like fight with Deathstroke. Okay. If but yes, that's if, that's, if they that, do it, that, if they do it like where I said in like Man of Steel, like you know, show it like in a like a linear well i want to say linear but like a, a order story not like going through like you know flashback scenes then 
it's i i would be interested unless there's like a bunch of flashback scenes it's like yes we know it's like okay let's just move on i guess at this point i mean like, flashback scenes can be like integral to like any story like that's there's no rule that's saying like oh you can't have flashback scenes right no, because it can they, be, they can be they very can, important for can, a, a movie but and depending most, on the narrative but, that you want to tell and the structure that you want your story to go but mostly they specs specs like just flashbacks suck it like that's true like like half the time people don't like flashbacks like why are we not getting this like you know like the like in last of us part two there's a bunch of flashbacks with joel's like why are we not getting this game and wish i could okay, i mean there 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 are flashbacks in batman begins do you not like batman begins um but batman begins starts with you know batman begins that you know they kind of show you know the you know they show him you know working his way up to batman because and um in batman begins Christopher Nolan and Christopher Nolan is Batman. He's not Batman until like halfway through the movie because they show him like progressing. You know, we see like the this um, assassin I don't think that's what they're called. I completely forgot what they're called. Um, no, that's what they're called, right? The sa- assassin league. The, the the league of the league of shadows. assassins. Uh, or something shadows like that. it that's how it is in, i think, in, I think uh, cw yeah. they call them the league of assassins or something like that well they're 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 referred to as both in comics it just depends on like what exactly you want to okay um, yeah it but, just depends on the movie like i think in batman begins they are referred to as the league of shadows okay so. and so and like but yeah, and, honestly like if you if you want to like we can't have this this is all on you ultimately like if you want to have this conversation or just stick with bvs so that's just one to. i mean it's at least I, I mean, I'm fine with having the conversation because it all goes together and it, yeah. it loops around. So, um, but I feel like we talked about basically everything. Um, I mean, there's one moment that what, if you would like to, we, we didn't get to. If you want to talk it about, the, is it the Superman death? Is it? Is it's it the Martha scene. If you if you still want, oh, if you oh, want to talk about that. Oh. Um. I. I feel like I just, you know, kind of give up on that. It's like, I don't really still like it. So I don't really want to keep talking about that because we're going to be here a little even longer. No, but no. Okay. But no, that's, that's totally fine. If you don't like it, that's whatever. But what I will say is I think it's a a very, it's, I think it's an awesome scene because it ultimately shows. um, So Batman is at his low. He's about to, for the first time in the movie, commit a premeditated murder. Um, and he says to Superman, you were never a god, you were never even a man, even without, even during the fight when he was dragging Superman along the ground, he tells him, yeah, I bet your parents I, I was, taught you that you mean something, that you're here for I a reason. Said, I, and I've said I do like the fight, mm-hmm. and I do yeah. like the Batman, you know, and like the Batman and all that. But it's just, yeah. again, it's the reasoning because of Lex, uh, because of Superman, it's like, hey, it's like it throws out this reasoning for, in general for Superman to even fight him but i don't I, right. yeah we'll, we'll we'll agree to disagree on that but just like obviously the martha scene is probably the most criticized moment in the movie it's probably the most polarizing moment oh, in comic yeah. book movie history but because i mean but i think i mean for anyone who really understands batman i think it makes perfect sense because obviously superman is saying save martha and then batman is saying you know why he's shocked because when he, it's shown that this batman has you know which it's part of batman's character he has major ptsd that's it that's his whole reason why that's why i think mm-hmm. it's ex- incredibly necessary to show the death of the waynes because it shows and that the first word that's spoken in the movie outside of bruce wayne's um monologue is martha which they thomas could, what thomas but, wayne but we, saying martha but we see that and, but we see that in the and like you know in the um dream sequence where he's like going visiting you know their tombstones like that like literally, you could have cut that whole entire scene out, and it's like well, and they that, that. that shows that's. But the only well, thing that I, that but, scene is, but serves the, like a different purpose in a way. But and what so, I like, like about that scene is that it's played by Jeffrey. Um, what's his uh, Jeffrey Jeff, Dean Morgan? Yeah, Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Laura, uh, Lauren uh, Co- Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. And so, if they get because I know um, Tom like Thomas Wayne has uh, you know been in like Ultimate Verse like Batman's. And so if they can get like, you know, those two back for, you know, you know, alternate verse, like Batman, like movie, that would be actually kind of cool. Cause I would, yeah, to see I'd, that, so. I'd be 100% down for that. Um, no, but so. like with, with, with regards to like, you know, the Martha scene, it, it essentially, you know, like remember Batman, the whole reason why he's Batman is because he can't let go of that trauma that happened mm-hmm. to him when he was young. It's, this is the whole reason why he's Batman. 
Mm. And so that's why I think it's important, like, even with Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson, like, they had better, like, I, I'm not, rec- I don't need them to show it, but they had better, like, you know, that had better be the reason why he's Batman, because that is the whole reason, you know. Um, I be- and so I believe there's other comments where that he's Batman for a different reason. So, no, but like, but no, you, you really look at it. And so Superman says, save Martha, and he gets Batman. If you watch him, he gets angry. I feel like he gets ticked off. Kid. I don't like the kid. I didn't like his little scream. I feel like this is maybe the I love slow the I, I thought I thought he did a good job. Uh, but no, but basically, you, you, and he gets ang- angry. He's like, why did you say that? And because that's actually how PTSD victims react to things. And then until, it's until he's getting angry and angry and until Lois comes and says, it's his mother's name. It's his mother's. Batman never stopped to consider that Superman had a human mother. Just he, always just, he always just assumed he, <laughs> the movie that shall not be named. Okay. No, but you know, he always assumed that he had alien parents. And so that brought him back down to when he was eight years old and he saw his parents gunned down in front of him. And he was essentially becoming Joe Chill and becoming the very thing that he had been trying to stop and prevent. And so that basically humanized Superman and brought him down, um, back down to earth, um, essentially, and really just caused Batman to, you know, and that's when his character arc stops and he, you know, obviously tries to redeem himself um through you know trying to rescue martha and make up for his mistakes and once again we will see the continuation of his character arc in um Zack Snyder's justice league and it's ultimately in after superman sacrifices himself that cements it like okay this guy i completely misjudged this guy and he feels ultimately guilt over that and, and we will see that continue in Zack Snyder's justice league so you know i actually kind of just realized they build metropolis pretty fast after two, 18 months um well they- well I will say this, Metropolis, people are trying to act like Metropolis got like absolutely obliterated. It did well, not. Because but they don't, you act- but they don't, I don't think they ever show like, you know, are you, talking about Man of Steel? are you talking about Man of Steel and BBS? Um, you know, like in BBS, they never show like, you know, the reconstruction of Metropolis. Well, cut. Words. Metrop- like I said, Metropolis, does, there's not nearly as much destruction in Man of Steel as well, people I, make it out to be. If know. you, if, but if they you don't look show at it, at- they don't show it. And like because I mean, it, from, like, from the certain angles it looks like oh it's completely fine weird because okay. i mean we're just because it's only a t- very small section of the city that actually got destroyed I, by I the world like engine bit, i feel like it's a little bit no well, if you if, like if you go back and, and watch like the final battle and you see where the world engine is like um shooting it's basically it's it's beam down to terraform but, the but earth even, it's like, a very but small even the, like, section the, even be even between the fight um between zod and superman that even causes even more destruction around the city even causing more buildings like most, yes but, like but, mostly of downtown is gone like mostly of downtown is literally i mean gone. it's not gone but i mean it there was a good amount of destruction but metropolis is huge like think about it if like a section in new york city got destroyed you could go all throughout new york city in a week and never see that place you know what I mean? Eh, I mean that uh, maybe, but I mean again, new yes, New York City is big, but it all depends all, on it all depends on where you are and like what it shows and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. And but which yeah. one of the but, but the ship is in where where it was left off from the previous film in this movie, and so I feel like they should at least shown some constructions like that to those people be like, hey, Metropolis is actually not fully built yet, and so. Because that's like one of the also while well, like game prepare for this review. That's like also like one of the biggest complaints I've saw. Like it's like Metropolis is somehow you know fully built, and when I watched them, it was like maybe it is like what? Well, no, see, and that's the thing. Like is people who complain about that usually think that Metropolis was completely destroyed and completely leveled, which it wasn't. It's only a very small section of the city that was leveled. Um, so. so- I mean, let's get to final verdicts. I mean, new, I already probably already know your final verdict, so, um, but you can say it. Maybe. And next. Yeah, so once again, um, just following up kind of what I said with Man of Steel, I think Batman v Superman has an incredible sco- score as well. I always got a shout out Hans Zimmer, you know, um, but the, I... The fight scene, uh, the, BV, uh, the Batman versus Superman fight scene I, score I really didn't like. Um, so, yeah, yeah like, that's probably the only one I like. And I guess... Uh, where Batman goes and kills all of the, you know, uh, all the Lex Luthor uh, crewmates as well, which is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, also shout out to that warehouse scene, you know, I think one of the best 
action scenes in a comic book movie. Um, but no, like uh, score, top touch. Probably I would pro- pro- personally put it second in regards to comic book movies outside of only Man of Steel. Um, but no, yeah, I, I love Batman v Superman. Um, I think it's a top tier comic book movie. I'd give it an A+. Plus. Um, and it's probably my second favorite comic book movie after um, Man of Steel. And um, it's probably in my top three favorite movies of all time. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, I summed up a, a, a lot of stuff in it. And I'm super excited for the, uh, you finally get the proper sequel to this movie in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Well, the series isn't done yet, but we'll wait until later. Um, I'll give um, BVS um, the Alta Edition because if uh, if this was the theatrical, it would be an F easily, an F. And and so and for the Alta Edition, it doesn't really add that much for me, like because like if I even watch you know the theatrical and the Alta Edition back to back, all I see is like these like you know two to five minute scenes adding a little bit more um, dialogue to the story, and so. And I would, I'm going to give, you know, BVS, you know, a D minus because it adds a little bit, but not that much. And so, well, I, I mean, I, I do very much disagree with, I mean, obviously it's your opinion, but I, I do very much disagree. Like, I think it like, it restores basically all the Superman scenes it's that an were, were cut movie. out. It's it, a, it's a, it's a cap, above, major it's a, cap, no, top no. tier comic book movie, no, top above, tier comic book movie, Adam, top tier comic gonna, book. We're gonna be here all top night. Top tier comic book movie. <laughs> we're gonna make, we're gonna make an exclusive episode on the big talk where this is, you know, just Peter going like top tier, um, for two hours. Um, but it's, it's an above average movie. Top tier me. comic book movie. And so, no, no, end game is, and Infinity War is. Get out of here. Cap, um, major cap. Well, BGS is better than both. You know, I actually looked up the rating for the Ultimate Edition. It's it's still pretty low for ratings don't matter. First off, sec if you looked at like Rotten Tomatoes or IMDb, it's the Ultimate Edition doesn't have a separate like page. It's still like reviews from the Africa. Second off, reviews mean jack squat. I mean you like, need good reviews to get more people. I mean when when you look at like I mean the shining considered one of the greatest horror movies of all time which is not that scary uh, it says on yeah the but it, it's like the scariest movie of all time is like just just nah. in terms of of just the reception of it it everyone hated it when it came out critics hated it audience hated it. it would probably have like the 20 or 30 percent on rotten tomatoes if rotten tomatoes was a thing back then empire strikes back star wars was not liked when it was very polarizing when it first came out people didn't really like it you look at blade runner Considered one of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time, wasn't well liked when it first came out. I feel like that's cap. You no, you can look all of this up. You can look all, I, no, all I of these like, movies. I feel, like, I feel like Blade Runner is cap. Maybe no, um, it, Empire Strikes okay, Back. Remember, remember, Blade Runner had many diff- has many different cuts. It's similar I, to like I guess you'd say how BVS is, how it's like there are different cuts, and then over time, when the final cut and like Blade Runner, when like you know uh, Ridley Scott's like director's cut and everything came out. It eventually became like, oh wow, this is actually a really good movie. I I don't know, but um, let me know um, your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. What you agree and disagreed on BVS um, Ultimate Edition? Unless you really like the theatrical, then good for you, I guess. I don't know, um, but I mean, like, I feel like we both understand each other, and so I feel like we, I feel like. I don't think Zack Snyder is a bad director. I feel like I kind of said that in my um, just uh, uh, my uh, Trey reaction uh, because I kind of said like we don't really know what Zack's. I don't know my exact wordings for. It's not like I don't think Zack Snyder should ever direct a DCU movie because he actually write he wrote uh, Wonder Woman. Um, he didn't direct mm-hmm. it, and so he helped I, write the story for Wonder Woman. Yeah, and so and I really like that film, and so and that's because Wonder Bros wasn't getting in the way. Of- actually, Wonder Bros actually they did actually he- did inter- Wonder Bros actually interfered with the third act of Wonder Woman. Oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, with the big soup, yeah, no, okay, yeah, yeah that's a lot. A lot of people game. don't know that, yeah. Okay. Because they wanted a big action scene at the end, um, which was that. What was the original ending for that supposed to be? I think it was supposed. It was supposed to be where um, there was some stuff where like Ares looks a lot scarier, 
there were other things where like Ares stays in his human form. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Basically, it was supposed the battle was supposed to be different. It wasn't supposed to be as like Ares wouldn't have been how he would have been. Yeah, music, how he how he was. The music basically. was good at um, um, when after Steve died and all that. It's kind of like got ruined with that crappy CGI. But um, I mean, like, so I feel like Zach because I even see like you know the you know the beauty of Zack Snyder in this film and in Man of Steel which is also another film I love and I just feel like Wonder Bros is kind of even even in the ultimate edition you can still kind of see the melding of Wonder Bros of like hey we want this it's like and like you know you're going too a little bit far with the darkness we kind of want to stay in the MCU realm of you know funness and so let's just kind of stick to that and next you know justice league which we'll talk about next week um that's you're you're gonna have to watch that movie by the way nope nope no yeah (laughs) no i remember enough about it unfortunately because i've watched so many clips um breaking down what scenes um like basically before the snyder code was even announced whether like what scenes were Zack snyder scenes what scenes were joss whedon scenes so i actually like remember the movie very well i've never watched that movie again <laughs> but hey if this if this, if this video if this video gets over 10 likes um we're gonna force peter to uh, watch justice league justice league so oh I, my I, gosh we I never got we, this. we even got higher likes on the review show so i know you guys can get 10 likes if this gets 10 likes or even more if this even gets freaking you know 50 likes we'll make him watch it three times so oh my gosh no so that's your, so that's your homework guys go you know spread the word of this video and like to <laughs> tell them to like it i don't care if they watch just make them like it um so yeah um yeah uh thank you guys very much for watching um we'll be back for justice league in next week and next i don't know if we'll be able to do a review like a normal like this type of review for um the snyder cup because my schedule is going to get even more busier. We're even lucky to do this. Um, so uh, I'll probably do like a normal review. And next we'll do like, you know, something later on, like, you know, a spoil, a spoil talk on like the big uh, Austin. And so as an exclusive episode. Um, so I don't know if you guys want, if you, if, if you guys want to see a review on that for, with Peter for the um, Justice League Snyder Cut. So uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, for Peter, for joining me. And like always, we'll see you guys in the next review. Bye, guys.